The Haggerty Drivers Foundation oversees the National Historic Vehicle Register, which is a program that we started in about 2014 to really document and help preserve and save the heritage of our nation's automotive culture. The collaboration between the Henry Ford and Haggerty's National Historic Vehicle Register is a natural fit, and it's been a wonderful experience for us. I don't think there's anyone in the country, perhaps even in the world, who's doing as much to preserve cars, car culture, and just driving generally as Haggerty. So since 2014, we've put 32 vehicles on the National Historic Vehicle Register, ranging from racing cars to Hollywood icons, very expensive cars, and common man cars, the vernacular artifacts. And I think it complements the work we do here at the Henry Ford. You know, here we tend to collect vehicles that are kind of general types, whereas the National Historic Vehicle Register honors specific vehicles with very specific personal connections. So they're kind of doing the same work that we're doing, but going about it from a different angle. The way we choose vehicles for the National Historic Vehicle Register is based on four criteria. The vehicle that we currently have on display is a 1966 Volkswagen Deluxe station wagon or a transporter, or as a lot of people would call them, a, a microbus. There's a real story and a real history behind this bus. It is connected to one of the most important and, and ongoing stories in our nation's history, and that is the struggle for equal rights, for civil rights. Esau and Janie B. Jenkins were incredible pioneers in the civil rights movement. They worked tirelessly in their community their entire lives to raise up the folks on John's Island, the Sea Islands, and the Charleston area. They did everything from offering food supplement programs to helping to establish a credit union so uh, black borrowers could get decent interest rates. They started a, a co-op to provide basic services that they didn't have access to. They started a bus line. Esau and Janie B were bringing people in to Charleston to go to school. They were bringing folks in to go to work, taught them to read and write, um, and taught them about you know some basic civic lessons in order to make sure that people had the access to voting. A lot of people get that story kind of confused with this bus. This bus he used for his daily chores. This was his daily driver. This vehicle represents a very localized version of a national story. And Esau and, and Jeannie Jenkins were, were among countless African Americans who were practicing what Dr. King was preaching and trying to improve the lives of their fellow black residents, in this case in, in South Carolina. But the changes that we're still working toward obviously could never have happened without lots of folks working at the grassroots level as the Jenkins did. The couple had purchased the van about 1967, had used it for oh, five years or so until uh, Esau passed away in 1972, at which point the van was more or less retired to the family's backyard. And of course, the intervening decades of, of time and weather took their toll. This vehicle was in really rough shape, and it was unfortunately only going to get worse as it sat there. And it's so significant that we wanted to help save it. There's a lot of value in unrestored artifacts. They are truly that testament to the past that you can see the original. A car is only original once. Once you restore it, that's it. You'll never get back to that original fabric. Our own preference here at the Henry Ford is to not do anything to a vehicle that is irreversible. I think this vehicle represents the new appreciation for unrestored original vehicles. The level of deterioration with it was such that when you would go to restore it, you would be replacing so much of the sheet metal that what would be left would not necessarily be the Jenkins bus. 
We didn't do this in isolation. We worked with the family very closely. We felt, the family felt that leaving it as is, but stabilizing it so that it wouldn't deteriorate further is a testament you know, to the Jenkins family and everything they did. The motto that Esau had on the back of this bus, love is progress, hate is expensive. You know, when I think about all the amazing things he did, it's so representative of the different ways that he fought in the civil rights movement and the family fought in the civil rights movement. Esau and Janie didn't let people tell them no or push them down. They were going to fight and do what was right and make a better life, not just for themselves, not just for their family, but their community members.